We have Star Park on the phone. She's the founder and president of Cure. Star, for those listeners who are unfamiliar with your organization, could you give us a little brief overview of what your organization is, does? Oh, thank you. We are a policy institute based here in Washington, D.C., that addresses issues of race and culture and poverty from a Judeo-Christian conservative perspective. So we work on welfare reform and all related issues. So I imagine this uh, this meeting at the White House was particularly important to you. Could you t- talk about how, it, if you know, how the meeting came about? Well, the meeting came about because uh, Cure, Urban Cure, we have three Um, centers, if you will. We have a clergy center, a policy center, and then a media center. And our media center hosts blackcommunitynews.com. So that's why we were invited. Plus, I'm also a nationally syndicated columnist with creators. So since it was a media meeting or reception, uh, I was able to go. And I also remember you going on the trail during the primary and everything like that. In fact, I think you went to my hometown of Charleston, South Carolina. I might have sent you a little uh, recommendations on where to visit. So I was, I was not surprised that you would, you would be there. Were there any, what, do you found, what did you find most striking in the conversation at the White House with, these, with you and the other journalists? Well, unless I missed the memo, I was I found most striking that the president himself addressed us. I was under the impression that it was a um, media setting, a reception for what we might call second tier media, so that those of us that are trying to get press passes and this particular administration is allowing for that second tier outside of the mainstream to have access. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were going to be with uh, in the press briefing room with Sean Spicer. So when the president walked in, that really uh, surprised me. And then uh, for him to stay an hour and engage all questions was really intriguing. That that's that says something, and I'm I'm like, mm, he's letting the the first tier media know you're not my only way to get the message out. What topics were most important to you that were discussed during the uh, your engagement with the president? Well, I think he talked basically about the general um, headline news. It is moving into his hundredth day in office, and so there's a lot of news there. But the meeting was billed as off the record, so mm. it didn't seem like it had a a format or perceived format. So everyone just asked questions according to whatever their um, interest area was. I actually got to ask a question as well, and I asked on issues that are important to us. One in particular, uh, this is also the 25th anniversary of the 1992 Los Angeles riots mm-hmm. on the same day of his 100th day. And um, I think it's, it's significant to point that out, and I wanted to know was his administration going to address it, because I think that that's when our country really changed. The African-American community, I think, at that point made the decision that they were going to seek revenge and redistribution, as opposed to what Dr. King asked for, which was, you know, repentance and revival. Uh, that, That changed us as a country, and we're still seeing the results. Star, do you think the fact that the president took the time, an hour, to be with you and other non-mainstream media, do you think that was an acknowledgement of the fact that the people who read you and listen to you and us here at EWTN uh, really had played a major role in electing him president? I think that had some to do with it, but I also think that it's he's serious when he says that he wants the truth told about his administration on both sides. In fact, EWTN was in the room as well, and it was mm-hmm. it was very significant, I believe, because what it did is it put us all at the table as credible journalists and also credible columnists and, and information, um, you know, I guess you could say opinion um, and, and, and commentary makers. Uh, so yes, it was very significant, and that's why I was, I was surprised the next day that, to read that some people were disgruntled. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I looked at it from a different perspective, that it was almost a testing ground that perhaps we can end up in the big room and and actually start competing with the mainstream media as opposed to always just complaining about it. You know, I think even the New York Times uh, just was it yesterday acknowledged that uh, the Trump administration is more open, seems more open to the media, even though they do have their combative relationships than the the Obama administration ever was. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. I've I've not gotten an invitation from the Obama administration the whole eight years that he was there. And if you notice, most press briefings, he was very selective about the different journalists he called upon. Oh, yeah. So this is a very new place that we are, that he, that the president is acknowledging that there are a variety of media sources out there with a variety of audiences that are very concerned about their country. Uh, Star, one of the things that I have found it, when I look at other media sources, they always seem to 
um, indicate that the president has, if you will, an animus toward those who are, quote, others, whether they be immigrants or people of color or African-Americans. What was your sense, at least um, as you look at the Trump administration, as their stance toward African-Americans and issues that matter to us? This administration, for the first time in a long time, and I've been in this for a long time, is really focused on trying to heal what is broken down in this country, specifically when it comes to these other ethnic groups. Half of the country didn't vote for him, and half of the country does not even acknowledge or appreciate our founding principles of a pluribus unum and limited government and, and, and free markets and, uh, and eternal truth. So I think he's really trying to find answers. In fact, our my organization is working very closely with his Fix Our Inner City Plan um, policy team so that we can find new answers for what is broken down. I'm, I'm encouraged, frankly, uh, that we have these opportunities. So the naysayers that are insisting that there's a uh, racial animus and that uh, he is going to hurt people more than help people, I'm just not buying into that because I'm not seeing that and I'm here in Washington, D.C. You know, I love your, your your positivity. I love how you go right into the core of the issues. And, you know, let's wait and see. Let's not put the man down before he's had a chance. Thank you so much, Star Parker, founder and president of Cure, for joining us today on Morning Glory. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, Star, it's so good to have you. Thanks for getting up so early.